Two years ago on this channel, we looked at how well the AMD HD 6570 ran. Today, we are going to revisit that card with slightly updated hardware and see how well the 6570 can fare up in 2020. Today our variant of the HD 6570 is from Asus. It's the HD 6570-2GD3-L. Based on the TerraScale 2 architecture and the project was Turks Pro, which was released in April 19, 2011. It did have other OEM versions released on February 7th of 2011, but being an Asus card, we are using the mainstream variant. Now this is a 40 nanometer GPU, but on core frequency is 650 megahertz. RAM clock is at 600 megahertz. The size of it's two gig of GDDR3 with 128 bit bus. This card supports DirectX 11, OpenGL 4.5 and OpenCL 1.2 and comes with a red PCB for you Team Red fans out there. Today we're using the Gigabyte GAH55M-2SH. This is a H55 chipset on the LG1156 socket. We have two sticks of DDR3-1333, which gives us 4 gig. CPU today we're rocking is the i5-760. This is the Linfield Core released back in July 2010. It's on the 45 nanometer node. It's a 4-core, four 4-threaded four CPU with 2.8 gigahertz at a multiplied 21 times. It has 8 megabit of cache and 95 watt TDP. Today we're going to be using MSI Afterburner to overclock our video card. This is a great little utility, it's very easy to use. I highly recommend it. As you can see it's quite simple to adjust core clocks and memory clocks. Just slide it and hit apply. And if you want to reset it or change it, you've got those options as well. So we'll be going between stock settings and core clock at 800 with a memory clock at 780. So maxed out on MSI Afterburner. Now the HD 6570 I tested today found that its stability was quite fine with the higher clocks. This may vary from car to car, but generally I found the HD 6570s to have a pretty good headroom, especially on the actual core clock. Okay, first up we're going to run CPU-Z and just run a benchmark to see where this i5-760 sits. So for a single core we got 284 points and multi-core at 1014.5. Interestingly, it showed it to be lagging just below the X5450, which is a Core 2 quad design Xeon. Our 7 zip, our single core was 3645, and our multi at 11772 sits just between i3-2310 and the X5450 Xeon. Cinebench scores were 346, so just behind, or a fair bit behind, the i5-2310, which is the second gen i5 and in front of the x5450 which would be the core 2 quad xeon all right we're going to look at some of the gpus benchmarks so first up we started with the eugene heaven engine and we have both overclocked and stock standard so our overclocked we got 107 and our score for our standard was 84 giving us an approximate 30% performance boost. Citibank's GPU benchmark gave us 38.6 frames per second on the overclock card and 30.8 on stock, giving us all up a 25% boost with the overclock. 3D Mark Fire Strike gave us a score of 931 for the overclock card and 739 for the stock giving us a 26% boost in overall performance for Fire Strike in the Overclock card. So, so far the Overclock is showing the HD 6570 gets about 26% increase in performance with our settings.
Well, firstly, we started off with playing Apex Legends. Now, this game ran pretty poorly on the HD 6570. It ran so poor that I wasn't even game to even try to get into a real game. So we are just in the practice area. Now, we had our overclock settings for 1920 by 1080, and we averaged at 12.8 frames per second, which was better than the stock at 7.9. We dropped down to 720p and had a better crack. We got a few more frames with 18.2 for the overclock and stuck 15.9 frames per second, but nothing that you'd enjoy, you just get frustrated. We did also try lower resolutions like 1024 by 768, but nothing that you'd want to be playing with still. Our best performance was 28.4 frames per second on the overclock settings. Overwatch shown more hope for the old HD 6570 with our overclock average on the 1920 by 1080 preset at 26.6 frames per second. Stock was sitting at 21 frames per second. As you went down to lower resolutions, like the 720p, we have our overclock got us up to 47.3 frames per second and the stock at 38.7. So I would recommend sitting at lower resolutions. It's still not perfect, but you will get an all right gameplay out of it. Venturing into Minecraft and the HD 6570 seemed to handle it more than just fine. With no real frame drops or anything like that, with stutters or lag, this game was an enjoyable experience for the whole time. Now we have we looked at our overclock and our stock settings sat at 59.9 frames per second. So overclocking to play Minecraft is no extra advantage. All right, we've jumped back into a classic Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get the Reaver Tuner statistics server to run and pick up the frames and the 1% lows and minimums and average and all that biz. So I've had to go off with Steam's little average counter at the top for the frame rate. So 920 by 1080 with the overclock, our average frame rate was 55 frames per second. Now, this game sort of bounced in between 45 and 70 frames per second at this setting. In the stock overclock, or should I say stock clock, we got about an average of 45 frames per second and it dipped between 30 and 50 frames per second. Now as we jump down to a lower resolution, the 1280 by 720 res, our overclock gave about an average of 75 frames per second and the frame rate was going between 70 and about 140 frames per second. Now with the non-overclock, or stock, should I say, we averaged about... 60 frames per second and it jumped about 60 to about 120 frames per second. You could use this card and actually play a fairly competitive game. Yes, it will have a couple of dips. If you go more towards that overclock, you will definitely have a better playable experience. Alright, we return back to the Battle Royale genre in Fortnite. Now Fortnite running at 1920 by 1080 with a setting set to pretty low. We've got an average frame rate of 24.4 with the overclock and the stock at 19.6 frames per second. Now the footage you've got in the background right now is the actual gameplay. So this was set at 1920 by 1080 with the overclock. Now we've pulled the 3D resolution back in this and it played quite well. Now, if you go towards the 1280 by 720 resolution, you get better frame rates, of course. Our overclock average at 41.4 frames per second and stock at 34.4 frames per second. Alright, the final game today is Heroes of the Storm. This is a title made by Blizzard, it's also known as HOTS. Now, we played this in 1920 by 1080. With our overclock average frames per second, we got 82.2. And the stock clock, we got 58.1 frames per second. Both stock and overclock, this game ran perfectly fine. No real big lags or stutters. Maybe a couple with the stock, but nothing that would impede your game. Card ran fine through this game. There was no real glitches or stutters that were noticeable to wreck your game. Walk walk. 
Now wrapping up the HD 6570. It is an old card. It's back from April 19th of 2011. That's nine years. It still is able to fare in on certain games. Certainly games with older engines or simpler engines. Also today we found that overclocking the HD 6570 will give you a 26% boost on average across the board. Now do this at your own peril. This can damage your card and reduce the lifespan of your video card. But it is already nine years old. It is probably time for an upgrade. If you pick this up cheap or just you want to get a little bit more out of it, I would overclock it. Now all video footage today has been produced by the HD 6570 in that i5 760 rig. Decent. Unsophisticated, but decent. That's all for us today at the off bit. Thanks for watching. Now if you like this content, remember to like and if you want to see more, remember to subscribe. Hey, feel free to leave any comments as well. Anything on your experience with overclocking video cards or anything HD 6570s, put them down there. Well, that's us for today. We'll see you next time on the off bit.